Josh Radnor, as I live and breathe, there you be. Hi. And I'm going to screw up your name. I know it's uh, Harula. No, that was perfect. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. My, my my father's name was Harula, so I just wanted to make sure. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Right. Congratulations on uh, on the film. It is so dysfunctionally funny. Um, I'm going to start with Harula. Uh, you're a musician at heart. I know this. Um, do you hear rhythms and cadences as you're directing, as you're hearing lines being spoke? I mean, it's, is it like conducting a symphony? Oh, gosh. Well, I wouldn't know what it's like to conduct a symphony, but I do know that voice and and cadences, I literally just used that word like 10 minutes ago. That is like a really important piece of how I cast things and uh, how I'm hearing it. And sometimes it's fun to just not really look at things and just like hear them. Um, so, yes, the answer is yes. <laughs> and Josh... This character is just so multidimensional. How did you approach uh, him and how how did it feel putting on his skin? Well, it was a lot about, I think, facial hair. <laughs> um, <laughs> sometimes when you find, you know, when I did this show Hunters, once I found the facial hair and the and the outfits, I it's just like the the, the character came. Sometimes it's, it's okay to work outside in. I don't know if I was doing that necessarily on this role, but I think I just... Um, I trusted that Harula wouldn't have handed me this role unless she thought I was the right person for it. And so I walked into it feeling incredibly, um, incredibly safe and trusting. And, you know, there's always first day of school nerves, but for the most part, I, I, I felt like I understood something essential about this guy. I mean, there's certain things you have to leap into the imagination of, but like being from the Midwest, being an, uh, an actor and a writer, um, you know, some days I feel like a great success and I know what I'm doing in the world and I know where I'm headed. And other days I feel a little more like Graham where you're, you know, puttering around or writing a sentence or two and deleting it and getting another eight cups of coffee. And just, um, there, there were enough similarities that I felt like I knew how to, what to lean into. And I had enough imagination and trust in Harula that where I didn't feel, um, that he was much like me, I could still um, bring him to life. And you did such an awesome job about it because, you know, you know, audiences kind of tend to think of you as a comedic actor and, and, and you are, but you're so much more because this role is, it has its roots in, uh, in something very deep and, and dramatic. It's almost a Shakespearean role. <laughs> well, that's great. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I don't think of myself as a comedic actor or, a you know, a serious actor. I just think of myself as an actor. And when something is required of me, I, I think it's my job to deliver it. So if there's something more comedic, I know I know how to do that. I consider that part of my toolkit. But also, I think the best comedy is undergirded with real pathos. And, you know, it's hard to be a human. And laughter is one of the things that the ways we cope and get through it leavens the kind of um sadness of life so so i think I, I i guess if i am a comedic actor i take it quite seriously as like um i think i think i don't trust comedies that don't have tragedy in them and i don't t trust tragedies that don't have humor in it there's something uh harula very familiar about this family Oh, thank you. Yeah. Um. So I, I co-wrote this with my friend Kobe Coburn Goss, who's also a writer and an actor. And um, honestly, our goal was to make something that was, first of all, doable in this climate, you know, um, but also just really being inspired by old, older films that, you know, 90s, early aughts, grounded comedies and dramedies and feeling like we we wanted to be able to just live with these people and let it be grounded and and relatable and I don't know I I just my family's Greek and so even though this family isn't there were like shades of different pieces of things in my own life and in Kobe's life and things we're observing that we wanted to talk about but not not in a way that felt like it was going to be like an issue movie or something you know what I mean yeah. Josh how is uh Colleen Camp as a, as a scene part I mean she, she, she must be brilliant I think Haru, did I only have one the one scene with her? Um did yeah, I guess it was only the one. She has the scene with the ladies, a couple scenes. Yeah. Like. I mean, she I, she was really making us laugh so hard that day. It she, was amazing. She was eating a baguette and <laughs> each take 
she ended up with more baguette in her mouth as she tried to talk. So my memory was mostly her just she really went for it. up, you yeah. know. I was like off. I had to like leave our little kitchen area at one point because I was like laughing and I had to like I was like listening to the takes of her takes more than watching because it was just so fun. I mean, yeah. she, she's a genius. I really I knew she'd bring it, you know, so. Yeah. There's something very special about a cast that can do that, though, that, uh, you know, can jump back and forth and, and end up almost being, you know, a family as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I felt like every one of these people felt like they had lived in their characters already for so long, even just on day one. It was very cool. I just fully bought into them as a family and her as the agent. Um, you know, we didn't have a ton of time to rehearse. So a lot of it was just people coming prepared and ready to be present with each other. Uh, when that happens, when you don't have a lot of time to rehearse, do you allow some improv and did they go off script a little? Yeah, definitely. I really like to just kind of get what's on the page and then say, hey, do we want to try something else? And oftentimes it's a yes. And then oftentimes it's a no. I think we got it. So it feels pretty balanced that way. Would you agree with that? Josh? Yeah, I always felt like we we got what you wrote and then it became a little more like, let's play yeah. and pull it apart a tiny bit and see see what we can get. And I'm always curious, you know, what ends up in, you really, as an actor, you just have to say, all right, we've given you a lot of colors so then you can take it in the edit and, and find the movie that you want to tell. It was very fun to edit this movie and it took a long ass time because it was very good. There was a lot of good stuff and and like just editing the scenes with you and Will were very it was very funny. I just um I was laughing a lot in the edit actually. Mm -hmm. uh, Josh uh, as people discover um all happy families do you, do you have an idea of what they might take away from it? I mean, I think it I think it's what I hope you take away from everything worthwhile is that you're less alone. You know, I think art is an antidote for loneliness. So if you think you've got a crazy family and people can't connect and misread each other and speak over and under and around each other, um, but, but fundamentally love each other, but often don't know how to express it. Um, I hope people just feel like, you know what, my family's not so different than that. And I, and I think that, you know, especially, as our politics become so fractured and notions of identity become so fractured, it's, I, I always like it when there's a family, um, you know, story that comes along that is not dependent upon the race or ethnicity or gender or, or anything of the family, but actually it, it just it hits a universal note where you say, look, families are insane. <laughs> it doesn't matter where on earth you're from. Families are tricky. It's tricky to navigate family dynamics. And, uh, I hope I hope at the bit, most base level, people just enjoy it and they find it to be a diverting 90 minutes. But I also hope they feel less alone watching it. Uh, Harula, before I go, I want to compliment you on the score. Uh, it it really is a, a wonderful score. Oh, thank you so much for saying that. Yeah, it was a, a beautiful collaboration with my friend Zach Ray, who I've worked with on a number of projects and my husband, who's. Mm -hmm. You know, he does string arrangements on tons of records and he he loved scoring this and it was it was a really cool process. And we have some songs in there, too, that that are new. So I appreciate you saying that. Thank you. Well, a lot of people don't notice those things, but I try to because it it just is the glue that kind of holds everything together. in a scene. Oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah, that was actually a tricky one. I, I don't know if I told you this yet, Josh, but it was actually really hard to score this movie because finding the right um, tone so that it wasn't too overly like slapsticky focusing on the comedy like hey guys it's comedy or do like doing a dramatic score is actually pretty easy this was trickier and finding like what that lead voice is so to speak it was nice thinking of you know trying out different instruments and we landed on the upright bass as being the lead voice so oh, to that's speak. cool yeah it was really fun a lot of trial and error but but trickier than than your usual film i felt mm -hmm, you know mm -hmm. making sure it was riding that line of of tragic comedy <laughs> dysfunctional comedy is what yeah 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 <laughs> uh it is such a pleasure to to uh, catch up with you josh we talked on the hunters and and uh uh harula keep directing and keep writing songs that's you're just uh so talented that way well thanks so much appreciate you
And Josh, thank you so much again. Thanks a lot. Good to talk to you.